Today, is there a red uh, dot? There's, there's a few options we want to walk away with. It says recorded. There's a lot of activity right happening today. It's a really packed agenda. So we're, we're going to start a little late, but I think we're still good. We're going to try to get out by uh, 7.30, so we're going to keep you all rolling and going. Um, we should do a quick round of introductions. So I know some, there's some new faces. There's always tends to be new faces, which is good. But we'll do a quick round of introductions. My name is Jorge Rivas. I'm with the Office of Economic and Workforce Development. And I'm one of the uh, co-project managers for this uh, process. And my name is Tiffany Gatina. I'm the Executive Director of EEG. And I'm a community partner in this process as well. Hi, I'm Rachel Tanner. This is Recording Us. We're going to record oh, no. our thing tonight, our meeting, so we can have people be able to learn. I think this is recording right now. So if you are a presenter, remember this is up here. And please don't move it or turn it off. So and we'll. You know, try to fit it where we can have it be recorded. So we're, you're on camera. Back to you guys. <laughs> uh, I'm Rhea. I work with planning, and I am working with the here in the strategy. I want to say okay. uh, thanks to Nevada Lane, who's here. She's one of our working group members. She introduced herself, but she's volunteered to her great skills of graphic note taking um, for our meeting today. So, so yay! yay. 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 And I'm Nevada Lane, working group, uh, and yeah, Christian Church was. Uh, I'm Michael, and um, yeah, I'm a student for Life Observe, and I'm looking at the meeting. Everyone, I'm Charles Lafarge, I'm a community organizer at the San Francisco West of Poetry. Oh, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Marie Gabor, and I work for Bridge Housing. I'm Mara Blitzer, and I'm with the Mayor's Office of Housing and Community. I'm Danielle Bennett, and I work for the San Francisco campus for Jewish Story. I'm Allison Thompson. I work with a nonprofit called Performing Arts Workshop, who will be the program providers in the Geneva Powerhouse when it is renovated in here. Welcome. Uh, I'm Mel Flores, and I'm an Excelsior resident, and I'm a member of the working group and president of the Excelsior District Improvement Association. Hello everyone, my name is Charlie Chavez, I'm a resident of Inverd and a member of the Hi, I'm John Wickman, and I'm a business owner of Inverd. I'm Katie Taylor, I'm a member of the Young Working Group, and I am in this house here. I'm Ulysses Rivas, uh, no relations over here. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm a born and raised associate resident, uh, I'm sure a neighbor of local soccer coach. I'm Ricky Carlton, a neighbor of the South here. In Thirty-five years. Bill Martin, Excelsior is your president. Gilbert Williams, native of San Francisco, subgroup here at Excelsior District. I'm also uh, chair of ACE, Alliance with uh, California for Community Empowerment. I'm Kelly Rednick, and I'm with San Francisco Public Works. Hi, I'm Sarah Altman, with um, Congress and Jackson. David Byron, just resident and business owner of Excelsior. Joao Keneally, president of the Admission Merchants and Residents Association, chair of the Ingleside Community Advisory Board, and native San Francisco, a long time homeowner, and uh, Southern Hills, which is now crop, considered Crocker Amazon. David Hooper. Aaron Yan, um, with the uh, SF Plan. Sun Yan Hong with Planning Department. And I'm Rachel, I'm with one of the staff members. And Maya Sandro, president of the Excelsior and Business Owner. Yeah, Theodore, I'm a resident of Excelsior. Just you? No, not you. Hi, my name is Jason Serafino Gar. I'm a District 11 resident, a renter, and mo member of the this working group and the mobility section of this group. There's some seats in the front and more food in the back. Please keep the seating. You think you might come later? I need yeah. some more food now. <laughs> Thank you. Um, before we move on, just a really quick reminder: there's no being passed out from the last meeting. During the last full working group meeting, we broke up, we broke into our subgroups. Um, and did some more work in them. So make sure the notes kind of capture what happened. And if you have any additions or edits, um, please let us know now. Or feel free to email us afterwards um, if you see anything that needs to be changed or modified or anything, reflect what, um, what occurred um, at that meeting. 
So, uh, do, take a quick moment to look at them. And just if there's anything like really saying that, we're happy to take a note of it now. Thanks, Grant, for passing those out. So, any comments? No, so if you find anything you want to see change in a future date, please let us know. Um, email us, give us a phone call or anything, or we can take a look at them. Uh, so, the purpose of today's meeting is a, is a kind of culmination of, of all the work that we've done. Um, in a little bit, we'll do a kind of review of the process of what, what we did in the past almost year, and then kind of where we're going. But today is de definitely a, an important time for us to come together and now for each of the groups that have been uh, coming together, spending a lot of time, a lot of hours, a lot of energy, um, leaving their families, their businesses, whatever it may be, to come together and share their ideas of how to improve the neighborhood. And each of these groups has met uh, over the course of uh, the year, whether it's multiple times or just a few times. But they want to present, they should, they're presenting their ideas that uh, they've developed as those strategies that have been shared before. There have been some more refinements since the last time you probably saw them as a group, but now they present them. They're, sh they're sharing with the rest of your peers. And you are, um, are going to see them either for the, for in more detail, and you'll have a, an opportunity to discuss them in a lot more uh, intimate setting once we've gotten to stations, which we'll discuss in a bit, and then gather some more feedback and share some more feedback with us so we can take that back as we move into, uh, into the next phase of this process. So just really quickly, um, Rihanna's going to kind of just review what we've done so far in the process. Uh, so we have a flowchart that shows the general timeline that the process has gone through so far. Starting in May, we had the big kickoff where a bunch of city agencies came together and um, spoke with you, met with you, uh, people in the neighborhood. We gathered some information, um, had an existing commission's analysis, a draft, uh, formed the working group uh, where all of you came together, um, and then everyone sectioned off into their own subgroups that they were interested in. Um, and you went through this process of forming your ideas and prioritizing your uh, formulating your ideas and strategies and goals. Uh, so now we're in this portion of um, the process here uh, where we really want to prioritize and decide which ones, which uh, goals and strategies you want end up ending up in the draft document, which um, which is noted here, and then the rest will follow after that, um, having more conversations after this draft is released, um, and then going into a final draft, and then into implementation of the strategies that you all discussed. And at a future meeting, we'll have an opportunity to discuss a little more about what the, um, what the future looks like after the draft is produced, and the opportunities that will come for more input. So this we're, we're hoping that in six weeks from now we'll come together, we'll share some of the results, and then we'll uh, be able to have more of a roadmap that you can request some feedback and partner with us as a working group member to take this draft, uh, these set of strategies out to the community and different populations and kind of get some more feedback from them. But more to come on that and we'll, uh, we'll, be, uh, we'll be discussing that more thoroughly uh, at the next meeting. But for today, just again, we want to remind you of the aspiration that kind of came on early on after even the first meeting that we had um, in May. There was uh, some, some really strong feelings around this aspiration, I think, that rose from the working group, from the survey findings, from just speaking to different uh, folks, that this is something that everybody resonated with or connected with. So we wanted to make sure that we were elevating and we're um, making sure that this was kind of the forefront of some of the work that we've been doing in the past um, almost you know, 10 months a year. And we want to just remind you that a lot of the work is, is, is gearing towards this aspiration um, you know, that we put out there. Um, so for the next 45 minutes, sorry. Aspiration just for the benefit of the video. Yes, <laughs> well, I'll read that, I'll read the uh, aspiration. As our neighborhood changes, we support and sustain and enhance what makes our neighborhood special, our families, economic and ethnic diversity, small businesses, and local gems. 
Is that, is, is that an aspiration or is that the goal? Because aspiration and goals are a little different. So I just we've been calling it an aspiration, and I think it's it's kind of a way to motivate us um, in terms of what we're striving for, and what we want to make sure that okay. our um, our strategies and anything that we put forth is reflective on this. And Thank you. Anything else on that? So for the next um, 45 minutes, 40 minutes, we're going to move into presentations. And this is where every subgroup um, will share uh, their conversations that they've had and also the strategies that they're putting forth that they're recommending to the larger group. Um, and at that time, we want to try to keep the uh, presentation about 10 minutes. And we're hoping that all questions will, can happen afterwards at the station. I'll explain, I'll explain what those are um, after all, we go through all the presentations. But again, we try to give them a amount of time. We try to go through them quickly, 10 minutes, and then we can kind of go into a station where you have the opportunity to ask more questions and have more of a conversation with your peers. Again, just a reminder, this is the opportunity for you, the subcommittee is bringing the ideas forth, to share information, educate, dialogue with your peers and your fellow co-working um, group members on why you're putting this forth. Um, I know there's a lot of conversations that happen, so sometimes putting that idea forth may seem really simple, but you might also want to share some details of how you arrived to that idea, to that, um, to that strategy. So, with that, um, we're going to start with our question. So, we're going to have the four presentations, yes. and then we're going to break into groups. Yes. So, is it possible that we could have a question session? Yes. Yeah. So Maybe the following that could, you know, everybody can participate in just five minutes or so? Exactly. So, the question, well, the way we're trying to configure it, um, so I'm posting to get deeper dive into the presentations at the different stations, and then after that, we are going to come together to share some of the things that folks saw, some overlaps, um, maybe not so, but no overlaps really, <laughs> and some things that, that should be elevated that weren't elevated, right? I guess I'm just recommending maybe a moment, maybe a question to see if people have questions before they break in groups that might okay. inform what they do. Yeah. With the groups. So, sounds good. Yeah, so just to... Uh, yeah, sorry, just to... I guess people would break in groups, they would be able to go to all of the different areas, and that if we only... If people are already behind, which is not my bad that people would be able to ask all their questions versus if we have 30 minutes, maybe five people get to ask and answer questions, but if we kind of break up, everybody can ask their questions. That was our hope. But then also have the time when we come back together where everybody's talking to, so we're trying to balance out. Everybody asking all their questions for a little bit and then coming back together as a large group. The idea is that with the, with the different breakout sessions, we will be able to take a deeper dive into the presentations, that perhaps your question will be answered in that, in that breakout session. Um, or if not, when you guys come together as a group, you'll be able to ask this question in um, But it's a good time to just see everything in unison and just see one presentation after the other and then take the deeper dive and then come back as, as a group, as a forward. So each presenter should be at their station to feel any questions that people are come over to your station during that time, during 25 minutes after presentation. I'm going to be here keeping time. You'll only have one minute. You only have 30 seconds. You're going to stop. Bye. So with that, we're going to pass it over to uh, public realm. Yay. All right. Yeah, let's get up. Okay. So my name is, uh, my name is uh, Ulysses Rios. I was born and raised in San Francisco. I live uh, in Mission Terrace. So I am in the public realm group. And so for the public realm group, we're we're made up of a, a group of members that uh, are invested in our communities, uh, whether it be stakeholders, we all have our families here, we're all born and raised here, I'm a homeowner here, a lot of them are homeowners as well. Uh, the subcommittee task, uh, would create a vibrant, clean, and unique public ground for the Excelsior Acquisition using Paris, Cracker, Amazon, and the neighborhoods. So it's really all of us coming together to create, just kind of form this you know, structural language of what we want our corridor to be in these public spaces. Um, successes and challenges of working with the working group process. So successes were, you know, we all have, we all had a common goal of creating just a really great public space. You know, our corridor has been somewhat expected for many years. So really trying to move forward with that was uh, was one of our successes. Uh, reaching consensus, so we all had a lot of great ideas. I think we got about 150 ideas that we all came up with, which we all voted on. Uh, we're all very invested people. Well, we had a lot of great discussions, always you know, from different backgrounds and things like that. Uh, challenges, 
Uh, in regular country so it was hard to get a lot of people to come together all the time. I think one of the hardest things for us was being able to get the point of view of every single person in the neighborhood. You know, I, I really wanted to put in thought, I wanted to have the, the view of the person who takes me in every day, the, the, the principal of Denman High School or, or, or middle school, you know, I wanted to have all those, you know, so that was one of the challenges. Uh, staying in our room, so we always had a lot of different ideas that were technically public realms, so sometimes they were mobility or sometimes they were, you know, more in the business, so, you know, that was a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Uh, larger community participation would, you know, would definitely help because we always wanted different points of views all the time. Yeah. Uh, so, assets, so, you know, all of us have some form of connection here, so we all know that we have such an amazing uh, community here. You know, especially where we're located. You know, we have so we're like an artery into the city. You know, we have one of the largest transit hubs. We have schools. We have churches. We're at our corridor. We have businesses, mom and pop shops. How many? How many neighborhoods are like this? There's not really many left anymore. So it's really our chance to really create what we want now. Um, yeah, regional location, resources, parks. You know, our our connection to the freeways and everything. You know, I think a lot of people see that, and that's why we're getting so much interest here nowadays. You know. It's really up to us to create where we want to go. Uh, so challenges, you know, I think historically, you know, I, I think a lot of our neighbor, a lot of the corridor, you know, it can be dirty sometimes. You know, I think cleanliness is a big thing sometimes. Uh, we really want to, you know, enforce that. You know, creating maintenance and enforcement for our corridor. You know, I think seeing something that always bothered me was always seeing the muni stops with broken, shattered glass and things like that. You know, so. Really trying to enforce that. Uh, changing the neighborhood perception, you know, I think for a long time it's been somewhat neglected by the city as well, you know, so we're really trying to change that. Uh, and then up until now, the lack of investment by the city, you know, so now we're getting a ton of attention, and even a group like this was something unimaginable for me, you know, growing up here. So, you know, for us all to be here and create that future for ourselves is a real opportunity to have some issues in place get every person's point of view and I see so many people in the room with so many great ideas, you know, and we can all create something special here. Yeah, and uh, the subgroup aspiration was the quality of public ground is vital in reinforcing multicultural community character, enhancing safety and creating lively neighborhoods. So uh, I'll move on to Lisa, who is in our goals. Hey. <laughs> I'm Katie Taylor, and I uh, apologize for my Walking Dead appearance today, but I'm getting over a little bit of conjunctivitis. Um, so, our goals. Um, we was hard to narrow down from the wide spectrum of goals that we came up with, and um, in truth, we did have quite a lot of concerns was, um, relating to safety. Um, and um, but. Um, we realized that uh, some of the other groups were overlapping and they would deal with the safety issue and also we think that some of the goals that we've come up with actually will enhance the safety of the neighborhood kind of indirectly. So the first one is clean, green, clean and maintain the public realm and for short we call it green, clean and maintain kind of a rhyme. <laughs> anyway, um, uh, it kind of speaks for itself. Um, we want, we're planning to um, try to increase the, the foliage, the, the trees, the plantings. We want to clean up the, the Mission Street uh, corridor and we want to maintain that greenery and maintain that cleanliness. So uh, many of our goals actually have a short term and a long term component. So each of them are the, the, the green, clean and maintain is kind of a shorter term and is kind of going on a continuum of the longer term. But within each one, we have short and longer term goals. So the maintaining is the long term one. The second goal, reinforce a sense of place and celebrate multicultural community character along the Mission Tech Corridor. We think that this is a unique and very interesting characteristic of our neighborhood that we do have quite a lot of um, ethnic groups in our, in our um, neighborhood and it's ever changing. And we even have streets that kind of Span the globe, so we are kind of a natural fit for reinforcing a sense of place and celebrating our multicultural community character. Third goal: build a coherent network of vibrant public spaces that's integrated and connected to surroundings. We're starting to see little patches of, you know, really beautiful areas like the Mission Persia Triangle and that little area in front of that karate um, uh, uh, place. 
And but we need more. We need to have it throughout the corridor, not just little spots of it. So um, let's move on to the strategies to support the goals. Um, the first one for police cleaning and maintaining is to maximize opportunities to add greenery to the street with cohesive planting selection. The second is to use education and enforcement tools to heighten awareness of the public realm's condition and to keep it litter free. The third is to study and develop mechanisms to fund and maintain the cleanliness of the public streets and open spaces in perpetuity. And we have a number of strategies or action items that we came up with to support these strategies. And I just want to highlight one of them. Um, one of them was to conduct a multilingual litter abatement campaign on a regular basis to establish a social norm that littering is not acceptable. I know we've all seen, you know, one-shot deals where people come through and clean up the neighborhood. We had one during Willie Brown's um, tenure as mayor, where for one brief moment in time on a weekend, Silver Mission was really clean. And people came out with their garbage bags and brooms, and they all cleaned up the neighborhood. We all got t-shirts, they supplied these with brooms. But then, nothing like that happened again, and you know, by the next week, everything returned to the normal state of litter. So, um, I would like, we would like to see this goal have a strong long-term component, and that would be this uh, conducting a litter abatement campaign which would be multilingual, such as, you know, have signs that, on the trash cans that, you know, say no dumping in, in multiple languages, or just a, uh, a graphic sign so that you wouldn't need um, different languages. We're down to about two minutes Two left. minutes. So, okay, yeah. next. Strategies. Yeah. <laughs> Support goal two is to use art to express and celebrate the identities of the area. Create a, number two, create a series of special events such as gateways to structure the experience of the commercial corridor. I want to highlight number two. Um, one of the action items was um, to create uh, a gateway to um, create a unique sense of arrival. We have all have seen that um, bridge over on Mission Street near YMCA that has that mural. Um, someone had the idea of why not have a big gateway at that point that tells you you've arrived at the Excel series. It could be a beautiful gateway. Um, let's move on to. Uh, supporting goal three, uh, build a coherent network of vibrant public spaces that is integrated and connected to surroundings, identify current assets and define gaps to create a complete network of public spaces in the community, and number two, engage business and property owners in taking responsibility to enhance the property frontage that compose a critical part of the public realm. I want to highlight number one, um, identify current assets and define gaps. Um, as I mentioned before, we have the Persian Triangle, and you know we want to um, maybe possibly find ways, explore, possibly um, 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 buying the property in that area to create a public space, like a, a park or some sort of you know, rest area, somewhere for kids to feel safe and have fun. And um, so. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so, that's my presentation. Well, thank you. Thank you. Any other members of the Public Realm Group, group want to say one thing that might have not been mentioned? Or, I think everything, everything should be attached by your Anything else you want to emphasize, or, yeah? Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, Great, so moving on to the next. That's the David, David H. <laughs> David yes. or David Letterman. Most of whom are all of whom had a business, were part of the 
the business community on the corridor. Obviously, folks know that the corridor has been hurting. There's a lot of vacancies. It's been hard to keep retail. Any kind of retail establishments, of course, that's the story of America right now. Um, we've had trouble getting them back. And you know, we had the same issues that the, 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 um, the public space group did. We had decent representation for every meeting, um, just you know, scheduling meetings, the usual stuff. You know, I will, next slide, I'm just going to fly through these. So, you know, I will say as a group, I would say we focused largely on the macro. I would say, first of all, we were sort of, there weren't a ton of disagreements in our group. We were all within reason on the same page. I think we had different views as to, you know, details and how to do something. But as far as what we saw, how we interpreted the corridor, um, there wasn't too much disagreement. And then we focused on the macro. We didn't get involved in general on there should be this kind of store there, or this kind. It was more structural. We really focused on what was going wrong and kind of how to stop the bleeding. And we focused a lot of our venom on the city. And I think Corey, you know, we, we spent I think literally one meeting, an hour and a half, yelling at it. Um, mostly Sean, he's not here, so. Um, so we really did focus on the, not the, the big picture, but what was, you know, how to structurally address what was going on with the corridor. You know, how to deal with the city, how to get, you know, more attention, how to deal with, you know, cleaning up, you know, the, the vacancies that are there before we even worry about the next week. I'm saying we're not going to worry about dessert until we have dinner. Uh, so we really honed in on, you know, the meat of the corridor instead of, like, the details as to what could go in. Uh, the assets, I mean, there's, you know, a ton of people. It's very diverse. It is mostly neighborhood serving. Um, a lot of unique stores, um, a lot of range of services. Anchor, I sort of disagree with anchors because there aren't a ton of large anchors on the corridor, you know, the way they're really used to them in Woolworth. But nowadays, there aren't. I don't think anybody thinks of Walgreens, you know, in Persia as an anchor. It's not. So, what does that even mean? So, we have a lot of little one off stores that serve the community, but, but then what? There's no cohesion. Um, pharmacies, offices, and so forth. So we already set up. There's a ton of diversity on, on, on the, the corridor of the street, not the street, but I mean whatever we're calling it. Next slide. Um, challenges. You know, I think folks who walk on the corridor understand full well what the challenges are. Um, people go elsewhere to do a lot of their shopping. A lot of people will not go to the Safeway. Uh, they won't. They, there's clothing stores, bookstores. A lot that's not there. The restaurants, not. Like the lower end restaurants, the really good kind of like ethnic food that we have, but other restaurants, people go outside of the Excelsior consistently. There are surveys that say that. We know from the city, we have, and, and we've talked, you know, in the larger working group for a long time, people go all over for other services, but not, you know, they, they often don't go on Mission Street in the Excelsior, and that's a huge problem. And vacancies, tons of vacancies, whatever the percentage is now, it's high. And you know, how do we deal with the vacancies? How do we deal with the business owners? How do we encourage businesses of getting in those storefronts? And that's where sort of we focus on the city because it's hard to open businesses here. The city takes sometimes a punitive approach to people trying to do things, open restaurants or coffee shops or whatever. How do we make it easier for the city to make it easier for business people to fill in these vacancies? Um, so that's kind of the macro approach. And then we did have some goals and sort of more you know, direct ideas as to how to address that. How many minutes are there? Yeah, five minutes and 22 seconds. <laughs> Hi, um, with apologies to um, uh, Marco Montenegro, who can't be here. Um, I found out about this at 515. Um, <laughs> but but that, isn't, that isn't a comp out, that is, I believe, in the goals. Now, let's. The, the first idea is that if we have to address all of these problems on Mission Street, we have to figure out a way to work with the city to streamline the goals. And that includes the possibility of getting the permitting process of the city coordination to work with us. Uh, you can call it facilitating or whatever you want. Now these are the three main goals that, these, that I've been focusing on. One is streamlining the permit process, and you have some experience with that. <laughs> Outside the storefront on Mission Street, Excelsior works as a prime example of how you take a storefront and you make it attractive to the street. Um, uh, that uh, This is part of the, how do I say this? Uh, okay, I'm gonna do the next one. Inside the storefront, how each individual establishment performing and how uh, and they supported 
may need to be straightened. I, I think what that means is how can we really work with the people who are committed to the community, who have been here before, who are often single proprietor storefronts. That's every commercial district in the city is uh, encountering big challenges. Our challenges are different, but if it's a community, we try to work with the people who are there. Strategies in a court goal number one. Fund a business, D11 business concierge to guide entrepreneurs through the permitting process. It wouldn't be bad. You actually don't just give them a list, which is the program now. You take them through it and you work it out. An example of a business concierge effort would be something like La Cocina. And I wish Maribel was here to talk to that. Um, analyze barriers to entry. Why is it so difficult for somebody to make an effort to get somewhere with it? How much time, cost of money, you know, how much expectation, how much physical and emotional energy does it take to start a business? And Sean and Andrea could talk to that. They've made a commitment to the community. Regular meetings with city agencies responsible for enforcing codes. That means that we accept the idea that there are codes, we work with it, and we don't allow some people to slide. We, you know, it's, it's a, everybody can get on the boat and it will make the boat float. It's a question of community, but you don't allow people to bail. Uh, speaking point to bullet three, checking in together to discuss progress on, a revolve, on resolving top issues in the community and follow through. So I have these talking points that I hadn't seen. Uh, and uh, I look at them and I'm saying, well, yes. Um, why not? Why not if you various permit notifications? Why not figure out whether the permits, the notifications, and all of this can be consolidated, can be st can streamlined in a way that actually support the community and enforce the city codes? Strategies to support goal number two. Goal number two is improve the environment of commercial streets so it is a place where businesses and services can thrive. Usage mix analysis, I don't know what that means. Based on the usage mix analysis, actively recruit needed businesses and services. Traditionally, this community has been full of single proprietor shops. That has changed. We don't want to be inundated by Target and Trader Joe's and the like, and yet, they, some degree of that can have a role. But how do we figure out what we need? We have to work at it. Focus the implementation of efforts, oh, the hubs of activity, whether it's Silver and Mission, Mission and Ocean, and uh, Geneva and Mission, we have to figure out how we're going to deal with this because these are challenges. Can we use those three positions as, as links? So you just stretch out your arm one to the other and you try to figure out a way not to work individually but as a unit. Um, speaking point to bullet number three, the hubs of activity can break the large commercial district into smaller sections, develop related but distinct identities, reflect the diverse culture of the community, I don't think you can avoid it, and build on strengths. So number three, how many minutes do I have? <laughs> Connect business services to existing programs offered by the city. Um, uh, I think that Marco dealing with labor and other people dealing with the idea of business, this can work. There's, there's no question it can't. Add programs that may be missing. There are gaps. If we need programs, we should insist on, on finding a way to make those programs work to us. Connect residents to job opportunities at local establishments. My pitch, Kenyon Market, I was over there two months ago. I said out loud, how many people work here? Because I couldn't figure it out. And the woman behind me was the manager, said 106, almost all full time with benefits. So there are times when a larger employee, employer, can really make a difference in terms of job opportunities within the community. Well, that's it. We can do it. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Business and service provider group, NEA, other comments if you're a member? Anything else you want to highlight or yeah. chime in? I don't think there's anybody else here. I will say for business, uh, for the usage mix, it was, um, folks were thinking about business mix analysis, but they wanted to broaden that term to usage mix because they wanted to think of things that weren't necessarily businesses, so nonprofits and co ops and different other uses for our storefront space. So that's the reason we referenced it. 
Thank you. The next, so the next group is mobility. Hi. Uh, <laughs> Jason, yeah. Yes, mobility. I'm Jason. This is Leah. And we're two of a number of folks in the group. <laughs> two of a number of folks in the group. <laughs> We're the last one standing, <laughs> right now, here, along with Roberto, and what do we want to do? We wanted to look at what our neighborhood has that's going for it, what are the challenges, and how can we really move people around now and in the future, trying to think about what can this place look like, how great can it be, what can our big future aspiration of making it great for those of us here and our local gyms. So we wanted to do that. We talked a bit, and there's not that many of us in here, and a lot of times we were being educated and brought in, I mean, educated by other folks in the group who have been working for tirelessly for many, many years on a number of different issues. So our hope is that this is a good starting point to get more voices into this conversation. Also, challenges representative of representation from different groups, youth perspective, I'm a Filipino American, I'm starting a, a business, small business, my partner is an SFUSD educator, how about you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> much the same thing, uh, you know, a multicultural family, uh, my husband is at SFUSD as well. Sorry, <laughs> <laughs> just hey, you know. Same thing. Um, I'm actually talking right now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> just kidding. Well, the point is that we obviously get, and we do need more voices in this conversation because that's where more and more of the solutions are. It's not just with us. We know that. And we really uh, appreciate the city staff and this process because that is what this is about, getting more voices in. Sweet. Uh, so we all know that we have some local gems here. Um, you know, we, we are the lifeline, as you said, to a lot of highways, um, you know, we have Muni, we have BART, we, the people can get around, so we all know that, and, you know, one of the things that makes us unique is, is being literally in the middle of the city where we can access a lot of these things, and, um, you know, one of our assets is Muni BART, and that's just not Balboa, which is one of the busiest uh, BART stations outside of downtown San Francisco, uh, but Montgomery and all those other ones. We have Glen Park. Um, I don't know how often we use Glen Park, but it's still an option for people to have two different uh, BART stations and UV connections. Um, second is the volume of diversity. Uh, you know, we have all different types of age groups accessing these points, um, that these <coughs> income levels, um, um, students, you know, uh, Let's see, and lastly, uh, streets that can serve as connectors. Um, let's see, a very uh, liberal mission. So yes, uh, <laughs> we actually have a really good lifeline of, you know, there's San Jose that gets us to the Mission Terrace. We have Alameda that goes north and south through um, the, the Mission, outer, outer Mission in Excelsior. Uh, we also have bike lanes that need some improvement, uh, but, for the most part, we have we have the, the blueprint there. We have the foundation. The arteries are there. It's just what's working for us. We know what we have. It's just we we got to fine tune some certain things. And challenges. That's me. That's me. All right. Who here has walked in the neighborhood recently? All right. Who here has driven in the neighborhood recently? How about taking the bus? How about riding the bike? Awesome. All right. <laughs> Name one thing. Think of one thing, one challenge that you had in one of those modes. And then for the next 10 seconds, just kind of popcorn them out. Ready, set, go. Crossing the street. Narrow the street. So here we go. Uh, double parking. Okay. <laughs> so we've got a number of different challenges, and we've got so much happening. Our neighborhood is a hub. It's a buzz. It's a buzzing place for activity, and we want that activity to stay in the neighborhood. Not only the activity of getting there, but staying, building relationships over the long term, 
spending their money, enjoying themselves, but making it viable and interesting. So some of the challenges, we've got mega blocks, which means that when you start from one intersection, you get the green light to go, you just kind of throttle until the next one, you get up to a pretty high nice speed. We've got a lot of long blocks, which contributes to speeding. We've got some interesting intersections, we have a lot of T intersections, which means, well, I want to get to the other side of the street, well, I'll just go. And it leads to some challenges and safety issues and people getting killed and hurt. So I guess that's redundant. We've got a lot of double parking, and we've seen that as, we, as our technology changes, ride hail, Uber, Lyft, all these different ways that we can get around, even delivery services, our roads need to really, we need to think about that so that we can have people getting what they need or moving people or stuff where it needs to go and having it works better on the road than it does right now. So it's all mixed up. Those are our challenges. Yeah, take it away. So in summary, we just had one goal that kind of uh, gravitates to all types of modes. Uh, the user with um, walking, um, transit riders, cyclists, motorists, motorcyclists. Um, so this is our subgroup aspiration as a whole. Make it safer and more inviting for people to get around the neighborhood who are here in the neighborhood and getting to the neighborhood, uh, our commercial corridor, and to community assets. Uh, we want to focus on who is accessing the, the corridor, where their desired destinations are, and, like, and how do they engage with what's current on Mission Street and Geneva. All right, so here's what we've got. Everyone take a big stretch, right up. <laughs> Two-thirds of the way through these things. All right, you move, we want to move you. We want to move people. We want to move people however you want to go. We want to take you there. So whether it's walking around the neighborhood, we want it to be safe, convenient, inviting, and enjoyable. Imagine the corners of your, your lips or a slight smile at the edges of your lips when you cross the street. That's what we're going for. <laughs> also, reconfigure the roadways while considering a variety of transportation modes and services. That's a mouthful, but it means crossing the street shouldn't be a harrowing experience. Trying to park your vehicle, your personal vehicle, you should be able to do that. And you should also be able to hail a cab or hail a, a lift thing and not have it not cross in front of the bike rider who's traveling with their children, that's me, uh, and, and have it all work together. So it's a really a, thinking about the puzzle and how it goes together on the road. And then ensure that it's a great way. Riding Muni is a good experience. People want to do it. You know, you can go to the club. I mean, you go to, go to the back of the bus and you can like sit with the different DJs who are playing music or you can go to the front, but it's it's good. You get where you need to go, and you have a good time doing it. And then, lastly, for people walking in cars, people taking bus, people riding bikes, however you are traveling, we want to make sure these connections for, for biking through, uh, to and through the commercial corridor are safe, inviting, and free from crashes. So we want you to do that. And specifically, we're also thinking about how can we get more people more easily from their home to the commercial corridor and have bikes fill some of the gaps that our personal automobile has filled in the past. We'll talk more about that in a little bit in the next minute and a half, two minutes. Okay, so four goals. Uh, we, um, walking around the neighborhood, so this is to focus on the walking aspect, we want to implement provision zero safety, so zero fatality is the goal. Enforce double, restrict, uh, double parking restrictions and uh, implement the city's green connection program and other city existing existing city programs in the neighborhood. So uh, number one is you know zero fatalities. That's the goal with with uh, pedestrians. Uh, two, uh, how do we enforce double parking restrictions? You know we took a deeper dive into that, and that means rerouting a lot of um, people to use Alameda Street. You know, and what that means what other small streets within, outside of Alameda will be affected by that. So, you know, we need a really, a, a, a really easy, a easy approach to this, but tactical, tactical, tactical as well, because people we'll get, okay, and then, uh, yeah, trees and, you know, all the good greenery stuff. <laughs> all right, 
All right, big picture, we need to study. We need to look at how people get around, particularly in businesses. Business owners think, oh, well, I have to have a parking out front. Well, guess what? In other places, people who walk, who are riding bikes, actually spend more money because they shop more often. We don't know that in San Francisco. So we need to study to look at that and see what's possible and what can be great. Also parking. Three and four. And then, yeah. Let's see. One minute grace period. Thank you. One minute. Whoa. Okay. So let's look at moving people. Maybe on now. Maybe maybe not. Okay. Next. Goal three. Uh, ensure a positive, enjoyable, intentional culture for transit riders. Um, that was pretty much self-explanatory. Um, you know, one of the things that we took a look at was actually people getting to their points where where you where Muni on the J doesn't stop right there on San Jose, where the 22 will actually take you to Balboa Park Station and not stop, you know, two blocks away. We want to make sure that everybody, everybody is encompassed in this goal, meaning uh, senior citizens and, and uh, students and families, and so we, we kind of make sure that uh, Muni is actually servicing everybody in the community and, and not sh all these shortcomings with certain stops. All right. How can we get around potentially with how can we get around with bikes? Potentially, I see electric e-bike bicycles, electric assisted bicycles is a great opportunity in the future, especially if you can carry your groceries or your children with them to fill a lot of gaps. How can we create safer bike connections for people to go to and from the corridor, the commercial corridor? And smaller streets like Cayuga <coughs> Avenue, let's explore ways to make those bicycle boulevards so that through traffic for automobiles can't get through, you have to turn off, um, or other streets that might serve that purpose where it makes it a safe and inviting place for people to get out there and start riding. And then improve the bike connections between other modes. So biking, if you're going to go up the hill to <coughs> Balboa Park Station, or you're going to go to Glen Park, how can it be just much more usable and friendly for folks to use. And then lastly, we came up with some ideas for improvements. This is improving uh, Persia Triangle. This is looking at T intersections, another T intersection here, Mission Child Care, and then this is the other one, this is the post office, and then a transformative reconfiguration of the <coughs> intersections to meet the user's needs. Yeah. Uh, just last, we, we definitely listened through the, how many months um, of, of, of meeting with everybody here. We, we noted uh, certain points of where there's danger, the danger zone. So we may have not uh, said it here, but it is taken the like, floor <coughs> in our presentation, and they, they all know about it. We've, we've bothered them about it. Um, so uh, it is it is a consistent, you know, broken record, but we definitely have gotten all of your opinions and implemented it with them. They know. So, so don't say, don't think that you have to stop talking. Keep talking yeah. to the city people. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Any other members from the building group? Any highlights? Anything you want to share? Or if you're here, yeah. okay. I, I would just like to say one thing about the Mission Street corridor. And I know it's been a real sticky point with the, the intermission when they did those red lines. Mm -hmm. And so I would just, you know, I would just put that out there and, and know that, you know, so there's certain things that people have good intentions on doing, uh, but it can have a, a little adverse effect to, to the community. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. The, red, the red bus so, lanes. So yeah. last, yeah. last but not least, uh, no, Charlie, yeah. Charlie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, well, I thought we'd just get up here and maybe wrestle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, so our committee, uh, these are the members of the committee that were disappointed. Um, we had developers, we had three developers. I he was formerly with Bridge Housing, and Alan, um, property owner and developer. Kabir Seth, uh, developer for the Presidio Bay Ventures, um, community workers and residents, long-time residents and homeowners. Um, so just wanted to thank the group um, that participated. Um, we came together because we wanted to promote healthy development that meets the needs of our diverse community. So that was kind of a guiding principle for us. Um, and we kind of 
um, appreciated the opportunity, given that we were talking these issues of housing, land use, um, these are complex issues, but we took some time to kind of slow down the process, build skills, build leadership, do education around these issues, which is why this particular subgroup actually took much longer than many of the others. Um, so we appreciate um, kind of like the plan department, OEWD, and all the facilitators and kind of being able to be flexible on that process. Some of the challenges was that um, we were kind of working with some really complicated issues, um, um, lots of beautiful divergent perspectives um, coming together um, and really feeling a need to engage our community around these issues. This is a really small group to tackle some really important issues that have huge impacts in the neighborhood. And so really felt like we wanted to tap into the expertise of our neighbors, the young folks in the neighborhood, a lot of folks in the community that have a lot to um, contribute to this process. Okay, so looking at the assets and the challenges of the neighborhood, of course, um, and this has come up in the other uh, subgroups as well, the actual location of our neighborhood, the proximity to the peninsula and downtown and SFO and uh, you know, the parks that surround us and stuff. Um, we have a very wonderful neighborhood feel and a very strong sense of community, uh, sort of multi-generational, intergenerational households. Uh, we have a high homeownership rate, diversity of community and age groups, uh, community institutions and schools, and we have a large number of families you know, compared to other parts of the city. All Let's give it up for the neighbor. It feels good, right? Yeah. Some of the challenges that we talked about was we have you know we have longtime residents, but even amongst our longtime residents, there's a lot of uncertainty, a lot of vulnerability for um, tenants and, and homeowners, um, feeling like the existing kind of city of programs and solutions that are in place are still not having the impact that's needed at the scale um, of some of the challenges. Um, how completely unaffordable it is for those that are looking to purchase um, homes in the neighborhood, um, and really how the private market is not really meeting the needs, um, building housing that is affordable to um, um, tenants at home and aspiring homeowners. And this was the overall uh, aspiration for the subgroup. We envision a stable and healthy future without displacement where our current future, <coughs> the current and future residents can thrive. So we actually have six. <laughs> um, so this is uh, these are the first three. Um, first one is we wanted to maintain and build a housing stock that can service our current um, residents and welcome diverse new residents, including low and high income earners, people of color, and immigrants. Um, we wanted to um, really kind of pause and make sure that we were preventing the eviction and displacement of tenants, homeowners, and businesses so that this is a neighborhood where low and moderate income, um, moderate income San Franciscans can thrive. Um, and we also wanted to um, complement the work, um, the great work that you all did in the, the business subgroup to develop and enhance the commercial corridor so that it serves working people and supports small businesses while offering a range of goods and services at different price points. Okay, and continuing on, goal number four is